television stations and by a grant from the City of Seattle and the Seattle Arts Commission. I was running one morning around this neighborhood and I went to the backyard and I was just sitting, thinking, and I had this image that came to my imagination of a globe with a hand on one side and a hand on the other and the fingers were interlocked and the words over top were peace through story. Two and a half weeks. Oh, are you getting excited? Yeah. I, I wish I was going with him, but somebody's got to kill him with the kids. Yeah, yeah everybody. Watch your step now. I think I am going to miss going out on the boat with him, but I'm going to know that I'm only going to be in the Soviet Union probably once in my life, and I'm going to enjoy it, and I'm not going to think about the things I'm going to miss. Well, I'm really uh, proud to uh, have her go to the Soviet Union. I think uh, a, a person on person relationship with the Soviet Union is, I think, is really a good, good way to do it, a good start. In our community of Mansfield, up in north central Washington, we're about 60 miles north of Wenatchee. The community turned out wholeheartedly in support of this project, so that many groups and individuals sent money prior to our even asking for it. So Monica has all of her money raised now. Lots of people do talk about the Soviet Union. We want peace. We don't want to be blown up by nuclear bombs. Chung! What? Chung! That's great. A little more practice, I think. Yeah. Sometimes you're a little unsure of the words, mm -hmm. and you'll have it. I like to tell Paul Bunyan stories because I feel that he's kind of like there, and I can say, Hi, Paul. How are you doing? I'm worried that he'll miss us. He's never been away from us this long. We've never been away from him that long. And I'm worried that he won't miss us. Uh, I hope he does a little. Here we, go. Here we, go. we as individuals raised our own money to go on the trip. I sure hope we make friends with our storytelling. I think everybody likes the story. There we go. Oh, I'm happy. <laughs> there are 27 of us storytellers ages 9 to 15 and 15 adults that are going with us over to Soviet Union. Bye -bye. Michelle says we're going to make friends with our storytelling. I sure hope so. We met every other Saturday for the past six months. During our trainings, we told stories to each other, and several, such as Britt Erickson, even learned to speak some Russian. We're taking 51 quilted story banners that were made in elementary schools, and we're leaving them in the Soviet classrooms. This is a really thrilling moment because a dream that I had several years ago is now being realized by these children as they tell stories across the Soviet Union.
breakfast at 9 and 9.30 we leave. As we went on the bus to the first performance at the Pioneer Palace, I was really excited because it was going to be my first performance. I was kind of surprised to see so many television cameras around, but all these kids were gathered around and it was really neat they were asking them questions. We thank you so much for the opportunity to share this program with you, giving us this chance to come together and celebrate the things that we share in common. And the Soviet faces, as soon as they heard the first line, they all kind of clapped and cheered and, and it was really neat because they recognized that that was their story and we had taken the time to learn it in their language. The turnip is a story about a farmer who plants a turnip and it grows up to be really huge and so he has to call on his whole family, even his mouse, to help him pull it out. When you're telling a story, you're really opening yourself up and making yourself vulnerable. But from the first performance, I knew that, the, that it was really going to be a big hit because it was a Russian story in Russian. The Soviet children also told us stories. And when they did, they did so much action that we could understand it, even though it was in Russian. What you, you being school kids, school children, can you do something? Yes, I think we can do something by making as many heart connections as possible. Да, мы можем сделать, связывать сердца как можно больше и как можно крепче. Идите все? Yes. Да. То можно ли сказать, что эта планета весь, вся планета это большой наш голубой дом? Do you agree that this one planet we've got, it's our common house, it's our house? Do you agree? Definitely. So it depends on us if it will stay safe or not. Is it so? Yes. I was amazed in the Soviet Union at how many people could speak English and how well they spoke it. The schools start English right away and when the kids are seven years old. We really like to get your letters. They are very interesting and sincere. They tell us many things about your life. Uh, many, many things. Uh, some years ago, I think it was uh, two years ago, we received a letter from your girl, Eve Gordon. And there was a poem. She wrote it herself. This poem is about peace. That's the flesh. I'm on the floor. It's finally come. It's a nuclear war. Help me, please. I'm all alone. I'm going to die. I can see the radiation in the sky. And now here I go, my few last breaths. I'm trying, I swear, to do my best. I don't like living in the world of death. Do you want all of them? All of them or some of them? Well, I say some five or four. No, I'd like for them to perform a small play. I was really thrilled when the little kids told the turn up to us. And it was neat because they were telling it in English, and these little teeny kids, and they were acting it out. And it was kind of neat because I felt what they feel when I tell them the story in Russian. It's too big for us. Granddaughter, granddaughter, help us, please. One, two, three. Oh, yeah. We communicated with each other. And even without language. And it's because um, she wanted to tell me to hurry up. So she goes. <laughs> and that was her way of telling me to move. <laughs> and I'm going, oh yeah. It's amazing how creative you can get. I couldn't believe that we were actually going to the Moscow Circus. I heard so much about it.
or three days now. What do you think about it, Heidi? Like when we went to the circus, I, like Michelle said, it's one of the, I think it's one of the best circuses in the world. I thought it was fabulous. I think it's really just, it's really interesting to meet the people. Um, I thought they'd be like, you know, sterner, you know, and they aren't, they aren't as stern as I thought. Paul, so. can I ask you a question? Why do you think they would be sterner? I guess it's the impression I get off of American TV and movies and oh, stuff yeah. like that. And so I thought they were just gonna, you know, be really super stern, but they're they're really nice. Yeah, because it also, like, when I first thought of soldiers, I thought them to be really, really strict and, like, wouldn't let you do anything or something. But as soon as I met them, like, most of them smiled and then, and they were all really nice and that I was glad that, yes. I mean, I could be friends with them. Yes. They told us that the soldier upstairs by the room number four, YSP room number four, had a machine gun. We believed him. And we went up there and I was sitting there kind of looking at him strange because he didn't have a machine gun. He was so friendly and he was just sitting here reading his book and writing it. Also, yeah, he was just really also, friendly like we go, hi, he goes, ah, ah. Yeah, I, I don't think he was up there to I, keep I us. I think that they have to be up in the places where there aren't very many people to make sure that the black market isn't going on or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, there's been a lot of that. There's been a lot of that. We've gotten, to, uh, some of the people in our group have gotten offers for the black market and I mean, it's kind of freaky. Some guy came up to me today and said, want to trade, want to trade? And I said, yet. <laughs> about 10 million live in this big city. Yes. So now we'll park the bus here. We'll get off the bus, spend some time there. Try to stay together. Please don't go far. Hear that, kids? When I first saw the domes of the Kremlin and I saw that gold, they kept on telling me that it was real. And I said, what? This can't be real. There's too much of it. I felt like I shouldn't be there because it was just too beautiful and all this gold was surrounding me. I felt like I had died and gone to heaven. and they had movie cameras and cameras and all sorts of stuff. We didn't expect any of this. We've been told that they were going to treat us really nice and everything, but we didn't ever expect this. At least I didn't. We thank you so much for this beautiful welcome. It is our belief that through the stories we tell, we can make peace together. Many, many years passed and the king returned. His hair was gray and his face was wrinkled, but his eyes glistened with wisdom. One day, a little red engine was going across a valley towards a great big mountain. And on the other side of that mountain was a village. I felt sometimes a little bit uncomfortable using the Russian language because I knew my grandma was really bad. But it seemed that the Soviets really appreciated it. In our school we study English and we are the members of the English choir. In this choir we sing American and English songs and today you'll hear some of them. Hope you like them. <laughs> We 
got all the special treatment simply because we were Americans and because we were coming for peace. It's really fit my image so far. It's what I thought it would be. Will you write to me and your letters? Yes. And I'll write to you. My little present. <laughs> and I think it's a very good um, occasion to me to speak with you. <laughs> I like storytelling and story development. That's cool. It was terrific. It was wonderful. I made a lot of new friends and I feel more comfortable now in the city even though we only met these people. And I made about 13 pen pals and I got all these buttons. And so I thought I thought we really communicated really well. A little present for you, it's a t-shirt. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello, what yeah, guy? Yeah, yeah. We shall live in peace. 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 Башни провожая день вчерашний и звонят колокола. Провожая день вчерашний бьют часы на старой башне. Будет, будет дай светла. Бой часов как ключик золотой. When it came to my story, I was just sort of afraid because I didn't think I was going to do good compared to what they had to offer. But then as I went on with my story, I just realized we all have our talents and our own special ways, if we're professional or not, and that's what sort of gave me the courage just to go on. And a blue And he did. And the little pig, he got The three little pigs is one of my favorites because it... I get a change of characters, and it's funny because, like, when I do the huff and the puff and the blowing, everybody laughs, and when people laugh, it makes me happy. Well, then, the big bad wolf came to the second brother's house. Little pig, little pig, let me in. The little pig's answer, Then the wolf said, Little huff, little puff, little blue house. He did. The Radio is in charge of all the state's radio and television. And this whole performance was just for us. It was so special. It was just for us. In Gostala Radio, they have 600 children dancing and singing in four groups. All the children from the choir are from Moscow schools.
connected to your Soviet friends. Well, I just want to wish them or tell them that we want peace just like them and that I want to wish them friendship and love always. Well, we're leaving Moscow tomorrow. As we were on the bus going to the Moscow airport leaving for Odessa, I was sort of sad because of the friends that I had made there and because that was the first city I had known in Russia. excited to go on to Odessa, which is south on the Black Sea, because I knew I was going to meet new people and new friends and be in a much warmer climate. When we arrived on the plane in the Odessa airport, they all greeted us with flowers and happy smiles, and it was very warm there. And my counterpart's name was Diane, and she was really special to me. We just got along really good because we both liked the same things, and we always agreed on stuff. These counterparts were arranged in January. When Michelle went over there, and she took over a book of our pictures and our hobbies and what we liked to do and stuff like that. For a whole four days, we were always with our counterparts. Odessa is a big port in the south of our country and a big uh, and world-famous health resort. passing someone on the street um, and I just want to say hi to them. What do I say then? Well, you in must Ukrainian. be in Russian, not in Ukrainian. Oh, uh, there's the, no, Ukrainian? no, there is no Ukrainian. We spoke only in Russian. And uh, that is the typics uh, of Odessa. Do you understand? The typics? Typics. Um, typical? Typical, <laughs> yes. I'll be glad to read your story about our country. Right. Okay. He tried to do everything best, that all people in the world live in the good relations, so that every people in the world have work, have right to everything rights. Every in Moscow, um, I, met a fr I made a friend at the Pioneer Palace, and she gave me her scarf. Oh, and where is it? It is in my suit. <laughs> I, see. I, I, will wear, I wear it tomorrow. Oh, and this is... When we walked up to the Odessa War Memorial, it was so large and it was and it was just so big and I felt like this was something that deserved great respect and that the Soviets gave great respect too. In Odessa the people there were attacked in the last war and Many people lost their lives. The Odessans um, realized that these people died for them, and they're really patriotic about this. This group is exceptional. First of all, it is a, children, a group of children. Uh, children are not like the grown-ups because they don't uh, touch upon the politics and they tell stories and they make friends easier and they uh, give example to the grown-ups how to make friends um, our time is very dangerous because uh, we have too much nuclear weapons in, on our planet and we must do everything we can to prevent the new nuclear war because this war would be... Uh, I'm very interested in politics, but Michelle's told us not to discuss that because that isn't the point of our trip, and I realize that. But I was a... But when one boy asked me a question, I wasn't quite able to restrain myself, and I 
entered a little bit, but I knew when to cut it off. And when he started looking a little confused or a little angry, I just put my arm on him, around his shoulder, and I said, it's all right. We don't have to worry about that now. And you smiled at me then, and we came out better friends than ever. That's just great. It, it was exciting being able to go in and see the church and see the people following their customs that, that they've been following for hundreds and hundreds of years, longer than America's even ever been around. There seem to be older people, people in their 70s and older than that, for me to get involved, it seemed not what they wanted. I didn't want to insult them, but I also wanted to show them that the kids in America do follow religions, do follow the ancient customs. house for dinner. They had worked all morning for this and they had prepared many, many different kinds of dishes. And she said that this was the first time she had ever had Americans in her home. It was kind of fun because here we were just doing something really trivial and that didn't really matter. And we're the two countries that are supposed to be most feared of each other and things. And that, that was pretty fun. So we, we were able to really get to know each other. It, seems, it sounds strange because the, Russia's supposed to be classless, but I, I'd say that they were probably a little more upper class. These kids were members of the young communists and probably had a little more money. In our school, in our school, mm -hmm. uh, it was really Thank you. It was so neat going to the ballet school. They let us come in and join the class. And I've been wanting to dance, and I've been wanting to dance. It was hard. <laughs> She was a good teacher. She was correcting on things that I consider are objectively the right things to correct about. I liked the way she ran the class because she corrected you, but she didn't yell and snap and get mad at people. Oh, the Opera House building that we went to see the Humpback Tours was so amazing. I mean, I just couldn't wait to see the ballet because I had the book of the Humpback Tours at home and it was always my favorite and the story was almost exactly like the book. palaces there was painting and violins and they had all sorts of instruments and wonderful choruses and they focused on those arts that was the specialty of the pioneer palace it may have been set up for us that they were trying to show us that but if it was then maybe they have a right to maybe they should show us that that's better I know that they did focus on the arts. If a kid was found to be good at painting or good at dancing, they were brought into that and would practice for it all their lives. The 
pioneers, first of all, it was the second step on your way to becoming a communist. I think that's a very important fact that wasn't stressed to us. It was really, it was really neat to be able to say something in a different language. I mean, because we usually think in um, English, but when you have to um, think in English and then kind of convert it over, and then you realize that this is somebody else's language and they think in this language, it was, it was really fun to use it. I kind of felt like, hey, I can speak a little bit of Russian. <laughs> it made me feel important. And they actually understood it. That was special to me. <laughs> The kids that we met were very involved in their school, in what their country was doing, knew a lot more about politics than most of the kids do here. They followed what the economy did, what their country did, and it was a very large difference. You see, we all have moments of uh, joy and sorrow. We can be happy and we can be nasty, we can be nice and capricious. Uh, you see, we're the same children as you are, and we want to live the life of happiness under a clear sky. Back up your troubles in your old skin back and smile, smile, smile. Once upon a time, on the great plains of Kansas, a little girl named Dorothy lived with her Aunt Em. to our home visit, we walked into the courtyard and it was really gray and dismal, but we'd been told not to get our spirits up, but then we walked into this apartment and it was gorgeous. The two cities of Moscow and Odessa are quite different in many ways, and these are Ukrainian people and they have different ideas and different customs. And there's almost like a rivalry between the two. There is a lot of vegetables. And all the sides, we mothers, we can do so many kinds of dishes out of them. Delicious, precious ones. And you come to a Moscow flat and they have a cucumber and nothing more. I want chips. They don't know what to do with it. It's rather strange. They don't understand the beauty of cooking. I'm not very fond of cooking myself because I'm busy. But sometimes there are moments when it's a pleasure to make yes. something tasty yes. for the guests, for the, for the son, for the husband. Yes. I think uh, maybe that uh, the communication of, uh, with our groups, with the groups of American children and Soviet children, is very, uh, is very uh, awful to the cause of peace. I tell you the story, I tell you the story, and the moral of the story was you can't very well be a king of beasts if there aren't any. And if the earth will be with... Uh, if the, without the people, uh, not one of the, um, not any of the country which will exist. will exist, it can't be the king of the earth, because yeah. there will be no people in earth. With World War Three, will be there. Like, like in your story, like in your story, you cannot be the king of anything if there is not anything to be the king of.
I know that this? between our countries, between our what? governments is something. Something. But wrong. between people, I yeah. not feel, and my friends who didn't never seen the Americans don't feel anywhere Man. to the peoples, yeah. even the people on the America. When I go back to the United States, I know that um, I'm going to have a totally different outlook on nuclear war because I'm going to think, great, okay, not only are we going to get blown up, but Oksana and Marguerite and everybody, mm. <laughs> you, I mean, you're all going to get blown mm. up too. And I mean, it's, it's weird because I'd never known anybody that was, that was halfway across the world before. And now every time that I think about nuclear war and the Soviets being blown up too, I'm going to think about you. <laughs> name here is Oksana and um, it was really hard to communicate with her until last night when um, when both of us really opened up to each other and to the other people sitting around the table but um, I think that I, I know that I've trusted her all along it's just that it's more of a openness you have to be open and you have to be honest and you have to let each other know that you're honest and that you want to be open the pioneer camps are different than the palaces. That's for the kids that are selected by the heads of the pioneer palaces, I guess, and. Uh, of course, the Pioneer Camps are even a bigger step than the Pioneer Palaces, I suppose, on your way to becoming part of the Communist Party. Dear children, dear American guests, we want to remember this day, and we want to remember this day as a symbolic day for both of our children. So now both American guests, American children, and Soviet pioneers will start to plant trees, birch trees. <laughs> Most of the people liked Odessa best. And there were a lot of friendships exchanged there, both boy and girl, and um, girl and girl, and boy and boy. If they would have let me, I think that I'd still be in Odessa right now. <laughs> and that city young 
gem of the northern world, amazing. From gloomy wood and swamp upsprung, had risen in pride and splendor blazing. I love thee, city of Peter's making. I love thy harmonies austere, and Yeva's sovereign waters breaking along her banks of granite sheer. And then in Russian, they say, Lublu tibia Petra Kari. On behalf of all the new brothers, and I should like to send you the best greetings to you. I would like to present this banner to your committee on behalf of the Mansfield Elementary School and the I felt really good giving that banner because I knew how hard the kids had worked and just all the love that was going through that banner to give to these Soviets. It's about a um, duckling who was born and was ugly and, um, and he was made fun of and picked on and that when he got older then he turned into a beautiful swan. My community and made that, that and I know the people and I kept on seeing people's faces flash in front of me. It's a group I'm all friends with and I'm just glad those certain people were chosen. I have a deep feeling for all the kids, even the boys. Yesterday, and the museum really meant, it really meant a lot to me. You know, I've I've never been to the Louvre or anything like that, none of those big fancy art museums. But that was first, and now I can say I've been to the Hermitage. But I, I expected more security. You know, I expected the painting to be, in, uh, you know, like something by Leonardo da Vinci that they said was so famous. You know, and it was it was it didn't ha have a super security system. I expected it to be roped off. In a glass box, you know, if you came within 20 feet of it, the alarm would go off, you know, and everybody would run in and get you. But it wasn't at all like that. And I think that um, it's just so interesting, all the architecture and how they used all those, um, all, all like the, the gold leaf, the, the gilding. And I think it would have been incredible to live in the time of Peter the Great. In the olden days, it seemed like everybody was rich. I mean, that... And so maybe people got jealous of each other and had a revolution. I've always, I have dreams about going back in time, and I think it would be yeah, I know. wonderful hey. to go back in time and know what was going on. I know, when I went to that, whatever you call it, the Pushkin Museum. Is that I Catherine know. the First or Catherine the Second? The first, first. I think. Well, I was walking through the rooms. I just try to imagine those people, because, you know, they had paintings of what they look like. So I try to imagine them just walking on the same footsteps that we were taking over him and I thought it was really cool. Somebody said to our guide, um, did Peter the Great just come home and throw his boots off and just lay on the couch? And so I imagined him running in and doing that. It was really cool. I love the giant ballroom because it was just so big and so fancy and I've, the one reason why I've always wanted to travel back in time is because just to go to one of those big balls because I love just fancy dresses and I imagined um, just this big ballroom full of people just dancing around. And let's just take a nice big breath together. And let out. On the screen inside of your mind, I'd like you to imagine a school building and just image all of these stories being shared in all of these classrooms. Throughout the trip, we had storytelling preparation before we visited the schools. And I'd like you to imagine a heart encompassing that whole school as those stories are being shared. of Africa, there lived a camel. This camel wanted nothing more than to be a ballerina. 
so the camel did her liaise. And her I think they liked my camel story because I make funny movements. <laughs> I really do. She was ready to call a performance. So she called together all of the critics and all of her friends. After the performance was over, a critic came up to her and said, My dear Lighty, I must be frank with you. You are a terrible, awful, disgusting ballet dancer. Now this hurt the camel deeply, but she said to herself, You know, I am a good ballet dancer. I love to dance, and I will dance, but only for myself. I think that in a way they got that one because they have a story similar to that, except for it's about an elephant. Well, my name is Paul, and I'm going to tell a story about a person named Paul. I think that the storytelling the story, did make a like difference, a bit about this person. but I think it was more of was breaking the ice. Well, and so huge. in making friends in the Soviet and Union, storytelling isn't necessarily the, and, uh, the whole thing, but it is the thing that makes the friendships with the Soviet children possible. We visited one of the teachers from the school who lived in a Leningrad apartment. It was amazing how the city changes because first there's like suburbs and then we drive just a little bit farther and there's probably 12 eight-story apartment build buildings. This is huge complex. And I know that almost all of them live in apartments and it's just amazing to see all oh, those yeah. buildings that's all together. Well, yeah, what, did you guys bring a present? Yeah, I brought, I brought, I brought, I brought, I brought a present. I brought a present. I brought a present. I brought a present. Surprise party, anyway. We're supposed to go to eighth floor. To who? Eighth floor. Eighth floor. Eight floor. Okay. Probably won't want to take an elevator. No, we can off it. We'll go off and cruise. <laughs> <laughs> This particular family seemed to live for their collections. They had airplane model collections, stamp collections, cat collections, gum wrapper collections, and anything else you can think of. <laughs> because the father worked on the railroad, he wasn't home very often, and the kids really got to know their mother as a person. And so because of that, I think they learned to respect her more. This apartment seemed to be unusually small, but the family really did a lot to decorate it nicely. <laughs> and yes, here is sour cream, here is tomato, sauce, and here is butter. No, it is a Russian, a Siberian dish, ah. you see? What's Siberian. Did, did any of uh, our kids, did, uh, uh, Justin, did any of you tell stories in Zena's class yesterday? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were, yeah. No? Mm -hmm. well, who, uh, how did the storytelling go yesterday? My class, that was just wonderful. So Svetlana can tell. I've been thinking about this ever since I, I got into this. I've always wanted to be able to go to find out what they, the, the Soviet people were like. Because you see so much stuff on American TV and I can just say, well, that's just a bag of baloney. When I decided that I want to come on this trip and stuff, you know, I decided that I wanted to come here for peace. But like after a few, like a week and a half that I was here, my mom told me that their way of peace isn't the same as ours. They figure peace as communism. There aren't that many communists in this country. It's the government. It's, 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 it's and that's government. the government. The, the, I know it, but see, maybe the government's idea of peace is different, but the people's idea is the same thing as ours. Yeah. Maybe our government's idea of peace is different than what we feel. How do we know? I mean, we're, you guys are 11, I'm 13. How are we supposed to know? What do we know about our government, really? What do we know? I mean it. And I think, I think that because of this, the people should have more impact on the decisions that the government makes. Can they really say that in their government? I don't know. Well, they can Are make they suggestions, that free? don't they? Are no, they? No. Can they do that? Are they that free? Probably when I get back to school. I'm sure one of the questions will be, how much do they want peace? And I just like to say, by going to the Square of Victory, I think that that was one of the most incredible things I've ever seen. So if I get that sort of question, I'd just say, um, 
Yes, they want peace as much, if not maybe more, than we do. all the time about world peace and all that stuff but it seems like that is one of the kind of subjects that they like just like to talk about we the children of two beautiful places of the world must fight for the peaceful sky and peace and friendship between all the peoples in the world we shall live in peace we shall that we could have stayed longer and just to sit down with one of them and just talk about what, I mean, what life is like for them living in a hospital. I don't think that they always treat people as nice as they treated us, but I think that it's not like they just told their kids to be on their best behavior. I think that they were just acting normal. I've been able to make a lot of friends here, and I think it's really great that I've made a lot of friends, but the only problem is I've got so many addresses to write to, and I'm not sure when I have enough time to write to them. Not only that, but with all the addresses, I, I don't know which, which Who address belongs, belongs to which, to which address to yeah. write. <laughs> with a lot of the kids, you really can't get beyond, you know, what are your pets' names and stuff, but with a couple, you just find one one subject that you can talk and talk and talk about. It's, it's in a, in kind of neat in a way that they are people too and they really aren't that different and just because some of the architecture is different and policies are different, it's, it's just really like America. I came here and I thought it would be so strange and, it, and the real shock was that I wasn't shocked because it was strange. I was shocked because it wasn't strange. Have them back, uh, have somebody help around the house again. <laughs> idea of peace is different, but the 
people's ideas the same thing as ours. They, they just, they want to live in friendship with the United States. I think uh, they can remember us as a friend, not a foe. Additional funding is provided by this and other public television stations and by a grant from the City of Seattle and the Seattle Arts Commission.